Hey, welcome to a brand new season of Snowmobiler Television. On this, our first show of the season, both Rich and I, along with some of the riders from our TV and magazine production, are joining me here in the studio, both live, in person, and electronically to talk about the 2021 crop of snowmobiles that are just now starting to hit the trails and mountains. Stick around, because it all starts right now. Brought to you by Yamaha, revs your heart. Polaris, think outside. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of pickup trucks for 55 years. Tough, smart, capable. So welcome to the studio. I've got Rich Keogh with me here and we're going to talk about the 2021 kind of what's all new for 2021 in the snowmobile world. And uh, we're hoping that right about now that the folks at home that are watching this, there's snow on the ground and maybe they've been riding some of this stuff already. Um, but for us, we got a chance to ride it last spring at Snowshoot. And maybe Rich, do you want to kind of describe what Snowshoot is? Because it's a pretty special event for us. Sure. Well, Snowshoot is a, it's a great event for us. It's a, where all the snowmobile manufacturers all descend on one area. And for the last, I think, I believe about 10 years, it's been West Yellowstone, Montana. And that they bring out all their next year snowmobile models mm -hmm. for us to ride, photograph, and video yeah. for the shows like this. And it's it's awesome experience to be able to do that. And we can ride models back to back and we can ride, you know, different engine displacements in the same model for the same manufacturer. So it's it's really beneficial for us because we get to learn a lot about these snowmobiles. And it's a, it's a pretty good day at work though. It's a great day at work. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you hit the nail right on the head there with, we're able to take like an 850 and compare it to a 650 from the same manufacturer. With, yeah. We're talking about Polaris and, and really critique how great that 650 is or like how great the 850 is and, and notice the difference right away. Exactly. So let's let's take that experience. We're, we're gonna kind of put our heads back into that space and let's start right at the bottom. Let's start with some of the youth sleds that are out there. And we first saw the, the 200 class at Snowshoot a, a few years ago now. And that's sort of morphed into a new class, a 400 class. And uh, specifically, we've got the, the Blasts from Articat and the Venoms from Yamaha. So what was your kind of, I know what my first reaction was when I was able to go for a rip on the Venom. What was, what were, what were you thinking when you first got on it? Well, when I go back to Snowshoot, some of my best days out there, Jeff, were <clears throat> on these smaller sleds. Like a couple of years ago, we were on the 200s, like the Snow Scoot. I was just they're, blown they're away. They're so much fun. It they're, just brought me back to my youth and it simplified snowmobiling. This year with the Venoms and the, uh, the Blast model lineups, it was just a great day. I mean, we were like kids again, weren't we? Exactly, and where the 200 class sleds were a lot of fun, but you're basically, it's a backyard toy. Um, but, uh, but the Venoms and Blasts are, are a legitimate snowmobile and um, obviously they're geared towards more novice riders, let's say. But, uh, but they are a legitimate snowmobile. You can hop on these things and ride them like a normal snowmobile. There's no, there's no compromise to them, I guess. No, I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. I have young kids, so for me, I was very excited to see a couple of manufacturers coming to the table with real sleds, like a Venom. Like, I have an 11-year-old. That's her next progression is going to be, because she's already pretty much outgrown the snow scoot. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm putting bigger springs in, and now what? I don't want to put her on a vintage snowmobile. That's, to me, that's a backyard burn. It's yeah. A, it's a vintage sled, like a leafer. But now, with the Venom, we can go trail riding all day, and you know what? It's not just for the kids. You and I had a great time on yeah, it. The, they can haul us around no really problem. Really well, too. 65 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, I thought, well, 60 miles an hour. I thought Around it was there, just yeah. a great sled and uh, hey, I take one on a high mileage trip. And the neat thing is when they introduced this this model series for both Yamaha and Articat, it wasn't one specific model. We've got, for Yamaha, we've got the SX Venom, we've got the SX Venom Mountain, and you've got the Transporter Light, and then the, the corresponding models with Articat. So you've got your mountain sled, you've got your trail sled, and you've got your, your work sled. So it's really, you know, they, they've kind of broadened that category out. It fits a lot of, of purposes now. It's a big category, I think, just because it fits so many, so many niches. But at Snowshoe Jeff, I think my favorite day 
was when we were all out there all together on the Venoms and the Blasts. Yes. Um, <laughs> going down the trails, I think that was the best time. So that's really, you know, kind of the bottom of that trail class uh, or mountain class, whatever it happens to be. Um, but then in the trail segment, we move up uh, and there is some transition sleds out there. We've got, you know, sleds like the Evo and things like that. But one of the ones that really kind of uh, worked well for me was Skidoo has a new engine in the, the Gen 4 chassis, but uh, it's the 600 EFI. Did you ride that? Yeah, I spent a lot of time on it actually. It was an eye opener. You're not gonna set the world on fire with a sled on the trail. But comfortable though. It rides like a Skidoo, it rides like a Rev Gen 4, like an MXZ. You go down the trail, it's plush, it's nice. It doesn't have a big shock package, but it's only putting out 85 horse. Mm -hmm. For what it's designed to do, I think you're gonna see a lot of happy people on it. And with a fuel economy, I think this sled you're gonna see in a lot of uh, rental fleets. And I think it'd be a really enjoyable sled for a touring machine. Yeah, it, it rides great. Like. One thing Skidoo does so well with their MXZ lineup is uh, they're great trail sleds. They're one of the leaders in the market, I'd yeah. say for sure. And this sled doesn't it doesn't hold back. And uh, any anyone who purchases a snowmobile, as long as they're aware it's an 85 horse, mm -hmm. 600 EFI, you're not going to set the lakes on fire with it. You're, it's a consistent, nice speed of a snowmobile, and it rides fantastic. Exactly, and I mean that's really some of the hallmarks of a true yeah. trail kind of touring sled. Uh, but before we go too far down the trail, uh, let's take a minute. We're going to have a break. And uh, right after the break, we're going to go do a deep dive into the trail segment. This portion of STV is brought to you by Ford. Built Ford Tough. All right, so welcome back to the trail portion of our discussion, uh, concentrating on 2021 models. And uh, Rich, Yamaha's got some big news this year. Uh, it may seem like a detail, but it is a new ski, a new strike ski. Oh, I was so excited, Jeff, when I heard that they were coming out with a new ski, but I couldn't tell you. I was more excited to ride the snowmobile with a new set of skis than the, the tuners to me, the thing of the past. We've got a sidewinder here. We need a performance ski. Yeah, this, the tuner was okay, but only in certain conditions, but the new ski, the strike works in a much broader range of conditions, which is the most noticeable thing. Oh, Jeff, it's day and night, day and night. The, the excitement level goes way up in the trails because you're with way more control. Yeah. The skis just, I was shocked about how much better the whole lineup was when they have a strike ski. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's move on to Skidoo. Um, I, I want to start with a new rear suspension that they have for their trail guys out here. It's the R-Motion X. A lot of tunability in this thing. You can change the angle of the front arm and how it connects to the rails of your rear suspension. Uh, but it has brought that whole sled right up. I mean, they've, they've really done a very good job with the, the latest generation 2021 uh, Skidoo trail sleds. Well, that, the package of the MX-ZX uh, 600R, when I was on it, I was, I was very surprised that, that Skidoo could make the snowmobile better from last year. I'm not shocked, mind you. No, nope. no. But it rides phenomenally well. It does everything better than you'd ever think a snowmobile could. You can corner faster and it hauls, it goes real fast. And there is a new ski as well. Now, um, sort of for us, the big news uh, that overshadowed a lot of other stuff was Polaris's new model, the Matrix. Uh, Rich, talk to me about your first kind of experience with the Matrix. Well, first go around, Jeff, I gotta say that snowshoe, when I looked at it, I was kind of thinking to myself, this is awesome for trail riders, but I was very happy with my access chassis. So moving to the Matrix, I was kind of a little skeptical, but it's the real deal. Like it corners better, it's more planted than the access, yeah. it does, it works better. And it, quite frankly, it makes every rider that much better again. Yeah, I mean, we don't have enough time to go through all the details, but um, you know, every detail that could be optimized, they looked at absolutely everything on this snowmobile to optimize it, turning it all up to 11, and they've really accomplished that. Uh, even your riding position, I think it's uh, 4.8 inches narrower at the front of the, the seat in the transition to the console area. Uh, that's also moved your knees in three inches closer together as well. And I mean, you can move around the sled so much better. Yeah, you can definitely shift side to side when you're approaching corners, and it changes everything. And I just thought the overall snowmobile was a real winner. Yeah. Now, they do have a new 650 engine. I know you've got some thoughts about that, but uh, like I said, we've got some of our other riders uh, that are kind of hanging out on Zoom right now. And Mark Boncher has been chomping at the bit to talk about the new 650 engine. So we're going to bring him into the conversation right now. Mark, um, what are your first thoughts on the, the new 650 Polaris uh, Patriot engine? Yeah, I, I mean, 
Uh, an incredible motor um, from Polaris, you know, Patriot 650. Um, I think we're kind of all expecting some, somewhere between a 600 and a 700. Uh, that 650 hits it right in the button mount. It's, uh, it's a great little motor, um, punches out of its weight class. Uh, I, I really like it a lot, um, really smooth. And, you know, the, the thing of it is, um, you know, I said this in a couple articles, um, but riding it, I'm not positive that I would need an 850 or an 800. Uh, that's how good this, this little motor is. And, um, in a couple of different chassis, but obviously in the matrix, you know, a nice little short trail ripper, you know, it, it's just a ton of fun. Yeah, I agree. Now, um, when folks are going to be watching this, this is going to be broadcast early January. Um, do you think? we're really going to see a lot of uh, a buzz start to be created because it's just again when people are watching this it's right at that time that you're going to be out there riding maybe christmas new year's maybe the trail systems are just going to start coming online kind of at the, at this point so do you expect to see a lot of uh, a lot of internet chat and uh, a lot of uh, stories going around about that new 650 engine uh definitely um and you're seeing it in the industry and market in general um it's hard to get your hands on a new snowmobile right now and Things are going for, um, you know, MSRP all day long. Um, and that that 650 was highly sought after even before we had the extenuating circumstances that we have this year. Um, if you've got one and you're out there, you're gonna have people following you around. I can guarantee you that, asking you how, the, how you like it and, and whatnot. And I see snowmobiling in particular this winter and, and probably at least a couple subsequent years staying really um really active and yeah, i see that class of snowmobile the 600 650 class um probably leading the way and uh you know helping to get more people uh, maybe we were out of it for a little while back in too so yeah absolutely i see it taking off even more thanks mark i agree with absolutely everything you're saying now coming up after the break we're going to move to the crossover segment STV is brought to you by Motovan, for the love of power sports. All right, so welcome back to the crossover, probably the most confusing section that we've got to talk about. Um, and the reason why I wanted to start with Articat right off the top is because when you go to their website, it's the simplest one to deal with. They've got two models, the Riot and Riot X, but they are completely different sleds, right, Rich? Oh, I agree with you, Jeff. I think the Riot X is more of a mini mountain sled, like a short track mountain sled. Yes. With the monobeam suspension in it, you know, the narrow front end, telescopic steering, post. I think that's more of a, it's, it's made for the mountains. Exactly. Where the other one's kind of more trail friendly, so I think it's more important. It doesn't sound as cool as the, the Riot X or look as cool, but I think that's more of a crossover snowmobile. Exactly, and they're not even in the same church when Absolutely. it comes to how they ride. So it comes back to being able to identify what kind of rider you are and getting the sled that's gonna work for you, which I think is the toughest decision in this class in general. And we've talked about it before, this is not new, but the confusion level is not going down with 2021 either. So moving on from Articat to Polaris, uh, one of the big news there is the Matrix chassis has made it into the crossover line with the new Assault, which uh, again, we talked about the Matrix in the last segment and all the good stuff there. But, uh, but again, here it starts to get, the water starts to get muddy. And yeah, it does start to get a little dicey, Jeff, for sure. I think Polaris did a great job. If you want a crossover sled, it's very simple. It's the Assault, but that's what they call a 50-50 snowmobile, but there's some room for questions, I think, with the SKS and the RM, short track RMKs. Exactly, and uh, let's move on to Yamaha. And honestly, there wasn't a whole lot of big news there. Some uh, new graphics, uh, but of course, they still have a crossover model with the big power of the Sidewinder, which is, for some people, I think very important. You have that 200 horsepower to be able to pull the trigger on. And uh, they've got multiple track lengths and also track lug heights that you can choose from. Some of them are spring order, but, uh, but you can find something in their lineup too. Going back uh, to Skidoo, their lineup is also one of those more confusing ones to deal with. So 
where do you think it starts? I think it's a little murky for sure, Jeff. There's a lot of options. So no matter what type of crossover snowmobiler you are, they have a model that's definitely going to fit it. Yeah. Um, at one point, I always thought 137 would be considered a crossover. Well, that's no longer holds true. That's a trail sled. So the Renegades, I feel, are more trail oriented, and your backcountry is your true 50-50, basically. That's your that's your crossover sleds. Yeah. But then you get the short track free rides, yeah. which with a short tunnel, you know, you got a taller lug track, you've got no snow flat. And yeah, I mean, somebody's gonna maybe buy that sled that's gonna live here in the east and it's not gonna work for them if they're gonna be going down the trail. But you, you said there's there's an accessory that they have to solve yeah, that. To confuse your crossover market even more, they, they have an accessory. Now you can have an, a snow flap for that snowmobile too. So I think you're kind of picking up that there's a lot of confusion for us anyways in the crossover market. And at this point, I think I wanna bring the president of our riders union in, Dan Scallett, who's, uh, who's gonna come in on Zoom from Minnesota, and uh, he's probably the one guy that can speak better about this uh, compared to you and I. So let's bring him into the conversation right now. Dan, what do you got to say about the crossover segment? Well, waiting for the white stuff to come down. So I'm getting really excited. I sit in my chair and I look out the window and it gets me wound up. So sometimes I put my blood pressure machine on, fire it up, and I wait for it to see what it says. It says, it's time to ride. <laughs> I agree with you 100%. It's definitely time to ride. So let's talk about some crossover stuff here. To start with, you probably have to analyze what kind of rider you actually are and what kind of conditions you're actually going to ride in. Are you going to be mostly on the trail and a couple times jog off into the deep and play around? Or are you going to, you're going to have a short trail ride and go off into the deep snow right away and spend the rest of the day and the trail's only there for you to get back to your trailer. Because it matters about, in the crossover segment, what your lug height is and what kind of cooling system you're gonna have on your sled. Are you gonna be able to get all the way out to your steep and deep area to go play that you're gonna, or are you gonna be in it right away where cooling doesn't really matter? Maybe if you're not sure where you fit in the segment, pick something more middle of the road. Oh, absolutely. If you want to kind of experience it, you can take a crossover sled and run down the ditch line where nobody's been, fresh tracks, and try to stay on the side hill and learn to ride the side hill and stay up there. And if, that's, if that really becomes fun and you like doing that and adventure riding, then you're ready. Then you know you're ready. But if it kind of like, okay, I'm really fighting it. This is not a lot of fun. I'm constantly getting stuck at the bottom of the ditch. I would rather be on the trail a little bit more and just make sure that I'm not going to get and go off and play in the flatter fields and stuff. But if you really like the ditch lines and playing and that's, that's, you know, riding on one ski and carving down the ditch is where great time to practice and a great segue into going out West. Thanks Dan. Now, speaking of mountains, that's where we're going after the break. Closed captioning is brought to you by Best Western Hotels and Resorts. All right, welcome back. It's time for STV to head to the mountains. But before we do that, Rich, neither one of us are mountain guys. No, Jeff, I, I would not be a self-proclaimed mountain goat, that's for sure. And because of that, let's bring Tyler in basically right away here because he's the one that is the mountain rider and he can speak to 2021 mountain sleds much better than you and I. So Tyler's been waiting on Zoom as well. Tyler, hopefully we get a chance to bust some pow this winter. Uh, I'm looking forward to some deep pow. As of right now, I'm in Oklahoma doing some work, and I'm just chomping at the bit to get back home to Idaho. Uh, it's already snowing right now, and it's going to start stacking up in the hills, and it's about playtime up there. Now, for 2021, there was some pretty significant news on the mountain front with a turbo sled. Talk to me about that new Skidoo Turbo. Ooh, the new Skidoo Turbo. That is like what all the kids are talking about. Um, it's pretty cool. Obviously, everyone knows it's the world's first factory two-stroke turbo. Uh, we got to ride it, all of us, last spring at the uh, photo shoot. And what an incredible sled. I mean, to get a turbo right from the factory, you're creating, you know, tons of power at elevation, uh, which is a huge thing for, you know, mountain riders you go up in elevation and you lose horsepower. Um, but that thing runs so crisp. I've always been more of like a Polaris kind of guy just because I ride some, you know, technical stuff in the trees, but uh, that Skidoo has really turned me on. I mean, not just because of the power, but that whole sled uh, really feels good. It feels comfortable and natural, um, and you're not fighting it at all. It really works well. 
Now you said a second ago that you're kind of a Polaris guy. Uh, not a lot new for Polaris, but did they really have to do anything new? No, I don't think so. I mean, they're still pretty tough to beat. Um, you know, they've, everyone's given them some good competition over the years and, you know, everyone's making a good sled. It just depends on what you like to do as a rider and what you're comfortable on. But the other new thing would be the uh, long track options for the Chaos. So before they used to only offer it in 155 and now it's available in a 163 and 165. So, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a phenomenal sled as well. I mean, that thing is a powder poacher. It just tears it up. <laughs> now, uh, another new one, which we're all kind of surprised to see is uh, the fact that Yamaha is back in, uh, in the mountains with a blue sled, but it's, we could probably talk about Yamaha and Arctic Cat at the same time. Can we not? Yeah, kind of. So, I mean, everyone sees it, you know, uh, it's, a lot of people think, oh, that's just the blue Articat, which it is, you know, for the most part. But Yamaha, you know, they really put their own unique touches on it. Um, I know they've got different skis, different snow flap. Um, and then I've also heard from Yamaha that there's different ECU tuning. Uh, so a little bit different fuel mapping. And what I noticed when I rode it was it ran incredibly crisp, great throttle response. And uh, I mean, it felt like an Articat, but with minor changes. So um, to me, that's pretty cool. It, it was good to see them make that change. Uh, after so many years of having a heavy four stroke, it was kind of hard for them to compete in this mountain class, you know? Um, but now I, I think they're only looking up from here. Thanks, Tyler. It was great talking with you. Hopefully we'll be able to ride together this winter. Absolutely, yeah. Can't wait to get on the snow with you guys and uh, have some more fun. So. Uh, Hopefully those borders open up and we can hang out together sometime. Anyways, throughout the show, we've been using technology to connect with riding friends throughout the snow belt. Hopefully this winter on the snow, we'll be able to do that in person, yet remaining socially distant, of course, but at the same time, enjoying snowmobiling. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Snowmobiler Television. STV is brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. Schaefer's. Specialized lubricants since 1839. Best Western Hotels and Resorts. Ready to get away? 